Amazon's reInvent happened this week, and we just had their big keynote. So, did we get the much-rumored Olympus model to challenge GPT-4's dominance? Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. This week was the Amazon reInvent conference, or I guess is the reInvent conference as it's still happening, which is notable for a few different reasons. First of all, it was at this event last year that Amazon very nearly announced their own ChatGPT-style chatbot, only to scrap it at the last minute, and lucky they did so, because of course, as it was happening, ChatGPT launched and changed the world. Now that instigated a whole new set of changes to Amazon's AI strategy, including stealing away the Bedrock name that they had given to the chatbot initially, and turning Bedrock into instead a sandbox environment in which they could help their enterprise customers customize available models out there, taking a position that there won't be one winner take all. And yet, heading into this event, there was some amount of anticipation that perhaps we would get an actual bona fide ChatGPT competitor. Around three weeks ago, the information reported that Amazon was developing something called Olympus. Now, even if this got people excited, there were, to some extent, tempered expectations. As the information wrote, Amazon's Olympus model faces steep odds. That piece writes, I know there are tons of AI models to think about, but Olympus is worth paying attention to. For starters, it's a clear sign that Amazon wants to control its own destiny in AI. While Amazon also sells LLMs from other model providers such as Anthropic, Investing money in developing another giant AI model shows that the company ultimately doesn't want to rely on others for key technologies it offers to cloud customers. That's probably smart because who knows what Anthropic's long-term thinking is, and the startup is also staying close to Google. Now, at the same time, this article pointed out how difficult it was going to be to differentiate. Part of that was that Amazon's existing proprietary model, Titan, had just had a very so-so reception. And still, it felt like something was necessary. The piece concludes, I wouldn't be surprised if AWS executives talk about Olympus at reInvent, the company's annual conference in Las Vegas, because if they don't, it might make customers in the press think it's even further behind OpenAI. So what did we get? Well, we did get a chatbot, but it wasn't this rumored Olympus. Indeed, it was something very different. What we got was called Amazon Q, and here's how Amazon CEO Andy Jassy described it on X. Jassy writes, Really excited to share with customers Amazon Q, a new type of generative AI-powered assistant that is specifically for work and can be tailored to your business. Amazon Q can help you get fast, relevant answers to pressing questions, solve problems, generate content, and take actions using the data and expertise found in your company's information repositories, code, and enterprise systems. When you chat with Amazon Q, it provides immediate relevant information and advice to help streamline tasks, speed up decision making, and help spark creativity and innovation at work. Amazon Q is both your expert for building on AWS and for analyzing your business. We built it to be secure and private, and it can understand and respect your existing identities, roles, and permissions, and use this information to personalize its interactions. If a user doesn't have permission to access certain data without Amazon Q, they can't access it using Amazon Q either. And from day one, we've designed Amazon Q to meet stringent enterprise customers' requirements. None of their content is used to improve the underlying models. Now, in the preview video, they show a theoretical person asking questions like, what product features are causing the most problems for customers? To which Q is able to dig into the repository of information that comes from this company specifically and identify the advanced reporting feature as a problem. From there, the user is able to upload a training schedule and ask, based on this document, how fast can we get to education around this topic? Now, of course, the point of all of this is that Q is offering something very different, a deeply integrated chatbot that is powered by the documents that your company runs on that you've already presumably given Amazon or AWS access to. In that way, it's much more of a competitor for the Microsoft Copilot type tools than it is to something like ChatGPT, although ChatGPT's enterprise business is, of course, a huge driver of revenue as well. Now, this clearly is part of Amazon's strategy to say to the world, we're not behind, we're just taking a different approach. Bedrock was the first part of that, and the vehicle by which Amazon made it very clear that they believe that the future of AI integrations into companies was not going to be winner-take-all, but was going to be lots and lots of different customized solutions, including both closed-source and open-source solutions that were tailored to companies based on what they specifically needed. This further walks down that enterprise AI pathway and, of course, builds on the trust that Amazon already has with lots of its users to try to, as Amazon Web Services CEO Adam Salipsky said, become a work companion for millions and millions of people in their work life. In their press around Q, they reinforced how many companies had had to resort to banning chatbots like ChatGPT because of concerns around security and privacy. One interesting technical note from the New York Times, unlike ChatGPT and Bard, Amazon Q is not built on a specific AI model. Instead, it uses an Amazon platform known as Bedrock, which connects several AI systems together, including Amazon's own Titan, as well as ones developed by Anthropic and Meta. 
Now, another differentiation point is price. Whereas Microsoft and Google are both charging $30 a month for each user of their enterprise chatbot offerings, Amazon Q is starting at $20 per user per month. Indeed, the message they were trying to send was clearly picked up by Reuters, whose piece about the announcement was, Amazon's AWS appeals to corporate customers with new chatbot. Amazon is trying to lure big corporate customers to its AWS cloud computing service with a new chatbot for business and by offering to guard them against legal and reputational damage that can come from the output of artificial intelligence. So what were people's responses to this? First of all, there was quite a bit of laughter at the fact that Amazon named this service Q just after news had broken that inside OpenAI, something called QSTAR had represented a technical advance that was sufficiently scary that it might have been part of the cause of Sam Altman's firing, although that has sort of been denied. Another response is basically a carryover of existing Amazon antipathy. LA Times tech columnist Brian Merchant writes, Knowing how Amazon has pursued worker surveillance and productivity regimes over the last 10 plus years, this release about its plans to use and sell a generative AI product Q should send at least a faint shudder down your spine. Now, the reality is that whatever they had announced, that probably would have been the type of response you were going to get from some circles. There hasn't been very much in terms of practical feedback from actually using it, but we did get a little bit from Brian Romley, who writes, Testing Amazon QAI with a large client right now that has been sideswiped by OpenAI drama. I have been impressed thus far. So again, doesn't say much, but at least what it does say is positive. Still, I would argue that probably the biggest line of conversation is reflected in this tweet by Professor Ethan Mollick, who writes, One year since GPT 3.5 was released, and the released LLMs of, of all of the tech giants are barely catching up. Google Bard slash Palm 2 is worse. Amazon Q seems similar. X's Grok is similar. Metalama 2 is similar. Apple has nothing. No one is close to GPT 4 yet. Maybe Google. Surprising. Two smaller labs, Anthropic and Inflection, both have models that beat GPT-3.5, but not GPT-4. The question is whether GPT-4 has some secret that prevents others from catching up. So digesting this a little bit, the critique here is a general one that applies to all of these big tech players, which is why they can't catch up with the state of the art from a startup lab like OpenAI. That also gets back to the comment from the information piece we started with, that the longer that Amazon waits, the higher the expectations are going to go, and the more the perception of them being behind might be solidified. The counter-argument to that, however, is that this is a very specific trajectory that just makes sense for this particular company. There are negative and positive ways to look at that, and both were reflected in the conversation on X. Tiernan Ray, an AI reporter for ZDNet, writes, Amazon's QBot is the commodification of AI. Amazon has announced a $20 a month chatbot, Amazon Q, which takes generative AI to where it was always going to go, which is a garden variety service that will be widely available and mostly sold on price rather than capabilities. Now, obviously, that framing is pretty negative, but it also contains within it a sort of inevitability, which is that these technologies are so powerful and so useful in a workplace context that, of course, they were going to become commodified. Of course, there was going to be, at some point, some amount of feature and capability parity across the big players. And from there, the decision point on which system to invest in was, yes, going to include things like price, as well, of course, as promises of security, privacy, and more intangible questions of trust that come from a legacy of who companies have worked with. Ex-user Amit writes, Amazon has massive distribution through AWS, so the question becomes if they can bundle this to sell to clients and take away from customers potentially looking to full-fledged solutions ultimately will be determined on the success of Amazon Q and how aggressive they are in trying to pair this with selling more compute. In other words, this is just part of what the cloud business looks like. Grimmy Underside at Monk Chips writes, Q is going to be a big deal. It's Amazon's version of what Microsoft calls co-pilots. In the console, in the docs, in IDE, in Slack. This is the future of docs. Also, we've all been complaining AWS has become too complicated and unwieldy. Q is an abstraction that could help. And this was something that I saw quite a bit as well. That AWS users specifically are very excited about a ChatGPT style bot whose main purpose is to navigate the AWS experience. Reinforcing that is a tweet from Deepak Singh, who writes, Amazon Q is here. If you're building on AWS, our goal is to change how you build and interact with AWS. From helping you with getting information in the console, to developing new features in the IDE, to Java migrations, Q is here for you. And all of a sudden, we have a different picture emerging. One that's not so much about how does Q compare to ChatGPT, but instead, how does Q reflect a different phase of generative AI in which the priority is not only on the expansion of frontier capabilities, but on the integration of AI into existing workflows. If you listen to this podcast a lot, you will probably start to be getting sick of hearing that phrase, integration into existing workflows. But that's exactly what it seems like the next phase of generative AI is going to be about. And after our story this morning about the financial challenges of generative AI and stability AI, 
it kind of makes sense why this is the part of the story that we're getting into next. Now, the other big announcement from Amazon's keynote was, as Adam Solipsky summed up, next generation AWS design chips. AWS Graviton 4 and AWS Trainium 2 deliver advances in price performance and energy efficiency for a broad range of consumer workloads, including ML training and generative AI applications, i.e. Amazon moving farther down the path of producing its own silicon. Although interestingly, at the same time that they announced these new chips, they also announced a deepening relationship with NVIDIA. So it seems to be a both and strategy rather than an either or. So when all is said and done, I think in many ways, this announcement was less sexy and exciting than people had hoped for, but much more reflective of where the industry is right now as it heads into 2024 and frankly, increased expectations of actual value in the workplace, not just the first blush excitement of a brush with an advanced new technology. Thanks for listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.